Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn how to convert shapes into arcs. We can make a multitude of shapes by going to the Tools dropdown, mousing over Markup, and we essentially have them grouped up right here and here. Now, things like lines and arcs and polylines are not necessarily shapes, but rectangles, ellipses, and polygons are, and all of them act very similarly to each other and differently depending on which one we use. Let's start with the rectangle tool. How it works is you can just click and hold or click and let go, and you can make it a regularly shaped rectangle, or you can hold the shift key, and this allows us to draw a perfect square. So I'm gonna let go. Now, regardless of whether you made the square or the rectangle, the issue here is that if you right click on the edge here, you have some options, but there are a lot of limitations and convert to arc is not here. Let's see what happens when we make a polygon instead. So tools, markup and polygon. Now I'm just gonna draw in a regular shape. And when I'm done, I can press enter to join the last and the first point, just like this. Now what I can do is I can right click on one of the edges here and we do have the option to convert to arc. We also have the option to add a control point from here if we needed to. Now we can also add control points by holding the shift key on top of a markup and you can see that the plus sign or the minus sign will appear depending on if you are on top of a grip or any other random part of the line. So I can add some right here and I can remove this one just like that. Then I can just adjust this without holding shift. So holding shift toggles that. So let's convert these to an arc, just like we were meant to do in the beginning. We're going to right click convert to arc. And there it is. Now that we've done this, we have a couple of options. We can essentially convert to arc again, which does nothing. And then we can see that there are two new grips here and here. And we can use these to control how the arc works in relation to its endpoints. We can adjust that like that and even start to make some very fanciful curves, just like this. Very nice. Now, let's go back to see what tools cannot be converted to arc and which ones can. And that's the main reason why we made the rectangle first. And then the polygon, we can see the big difference between them. Let's go back to tools and markup. And let's look at ellipses. Let's see what we can do with these. These are essentially arcs. And of course, by holding shift, we can make a perfect circle. And right-clicking, we have similar options to the rectangles. So rectangles and ellipses are meant to essentially be what they are, and they cannot really be converted, while polygons have that freedom. Now let's go to Tools and Markup, and let's look at lines and polylines, for example. With a line, we can make one, right-click, and Convert to Arc is not available. However, if we go to Tools and Markup and Polyline, and we make multiple segments, just like this, the difference is they don't have to join up, but when you right click on them, you can convert them to an arc and of course add control points to them. And there it is. This one is our arc right here. We have our two extra grips. This one was very close to the other one. We can adjust that and the same as before. Now let's go and look at a couple more things, tools and markup once again. And this time we can actually create arcs from scratch. Oops, let's go back there. There we go. So from here, you can essentially click and you can draw this arc any way you want. Then you can right click on it and you can see that convert to arc is not available because it's already an arc essentially. Now, if you wanted to adjust the arc more, here's how it works. You can essentially use the grips at the edges to change the arc's scale. So about roughly how large it is and by moving up, down, left, and right, you can change the angle of portions of the arc. If you wanted the arc to continue, you would actually take this grip here or this one here at the endpoints. And now you can see that you can continue the arc till it becomes almost an ellipse of some sort. Now the difference is, does it need to join? So the answer is no, this ellipse doesn't really join. That's the big difference between arcs and ellipses, but they're very similar to each other. And that's essentially how you can convert polygons and polylines into arcs. And now we know that the other tools don't have the option, but there's a lot of different flexibility and options with tools in Bluebeam Review. Thank you very much for watching our tutorial on converting different shapes to arcs. Once again, my name is Ari and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have a great rest of your day.